I'm Greg Jones, 1623 Custom Harmonicas, and in today's video we're going to uh, talk about some uh, real simple overblow adjustments that you can make uh, on your diatonic harmonica. So, uh, first of all, if you're uh, trying to learn the skill of overblowing, I really believe uh, you should uh, get the services of a dedicated teacher who is a master in the art of overblowing. It's very difficult, and although many players will claim that they're able to, to use the technique, very few uh, are, and, and those that uh, are, are are, are far fewer than what most uh, would think or believe. Uh, it's a misunderstood technique, but it just takes years of practice. It's it's not something you can just learn to do. It's far more complex than uh, than than our uh, beginning level techniques of draw bends and stuff like that. And overblow, uh, we, it's not only a technique that requires uh, a lot of uh, control, uh, but it requires a good ear uh, to keep those uh, notes in tune. Uh, but after years of practice and uh, hopefully years of study with an instructor, you can uh, you can master the technique and it's an extremely powerful and it allows you to um, to kind of work out songs and uh, and and ad advance your your usage of notes uh, when you're soloing and when you're playing different tunes. So it's just it's just a really good technique for those that are serious about it. Anyhow, this is a stock 1847 uh, classic. It's in the key of C. So if we look at the uh, blow, uh, let's take the blow four, obviously a C note, draw note is a D, overblow to, uh, note would be an E flat, and uh, this is a stock, I've made no adjustments to it, and actually the four overblow uh, does play, it doesn't sound great, but it, it, it does come out, and let's uh, try the uh, five overblow. Five overblow is there. Six overblow is there. You hear a little bit of squealing, and um, I'm going to show you a technique not only to help uh, reduce some of that squealing, but also to uh, help those notes come out a little easier. Uh, once again, I'm going to play uh, the five overblow is kind of a, one of my favorite notes uh, because that gives us the major seventh in second position. So I'm going to play the major scale in second position real quick. Okay, so these overblows are there, but uh, once again, they don't sound great. So we're gonna make a couple adjustments here. I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. I'm gonna adjust the camera. First and foremost, as I'll tell uh, everybody when you're working on your diatonic or your uh, chromatic, always work over a napkin or a towel. Uh, I just think it's a good idea because as you take these screws out, they're gonna fall on your table surface there and they're always gonna bounce out onto the floor on the carpet you're going to lose them or find them in the bottom of your foot at some point so work over a towel so that uh, your screws don't bounce out and i'm just going to put those in a safe place here and what we're going to do get these covers off so to get the four overblow and four five and six overblow i'm going to mark these notes for you so you can see it's going to be the four five and six the real key to getting the four, five, and six overblow uh, is, uh, let's talk about this back up just a minute. What an overblow is, is the we're, we're going to use our technique to choke, essentially choke the blow reed. It's not gonna sound. Uh, we want, when, when, that when that reed basically locks in to the slot, it won't sound. Now we're gonna have air passing across this reed from the reverse and that's what gives us that's what gives us the overblow so what you can actually do is put your finger on that note and try playing and it gives you an overblow so you, you put your if you put your finger on the blow note and it'll give you actually a, a fairly decent uh, fairly decent uh, overblow note using this reed. And I'll show you. Watch what I was saying. If I put my finger on the bottom reed, nothing sounds right uh, because that's the the overblow note is 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 sounded by activating the draw reed. Okay, so the trick, the trick on an overblow is to get that uh, reed to lock into the slot there. Uh, but in order to do that, we have to reduce that gap that uh, sits between the reed and the reed plate. It has to be. We have to find a sweet spot because we, if we reduce that gap too much, uh, 
that note will never play. Or when we're trying to play with a little bit more, uh, let's say, emotion, or, or, or we increase your pressure on that, uh, the blow note might unintentionally un uh, lock in. So what we have to do is figure out a way to reduce that gap a little bit while still allowing the blow note uh, to play. So a real simple technique. You can just use a, I use a probe, special probes that I have, but I would recommend just a toothpick or even a flat, small flat baited screwdriver, maybe that you use for uh, glasses repair or something like that. A toothpick works really well, doesn't mar the reed. And we're just gonna stick it through the front. We're just gonna lift up that reed, put a little tension on it, just a little tension, and then just eyeball it. See when you get that reed to, um, see when you get that reed gap to lower a little bit. Again, do it again. I'm gonna move over to the five. Now, one thing to think about here when you do this, you're playing these notes over and over. Saliva is gonna get in there, and it's gonna mess up, uh, mess up your adjustments. So we want to do this slowly, and then um, just kind of clean off the excess saliva around there uh, because that will. Um, mess things up and when you play a note over and over you're just gonna put a lot of moisture in there so so our six actually plays pretty easy and that's common that's our easiest overblow note basically I'm gonna give that six a little bit of work too and So, pretty simple technique uh, to get those overblows to sound a little bit more and uh, something you can do uh, very simply yourself. And uh, just be careful that you don't go too far. If you do go too far and that blow note doesn't sound, you're going to have to go back the other way. Uh, you're going to have to press down on that reed to try and open the gap. And uh, so just be, be careful. Make sure you work very slowly. Uh, and uh, as far as uh, on the Seidel stainless steel models, you're not going to break anything. Uh, you're, these are stainless steel reeds. They're very durable. They, they can withstand adjustments. So I wouldn't worry too much about permanently breaking something. However, you may take it out of adjustment so far that it won't play and you have to go back the other direction. And I'm betting I just did the same thing. Yep, I did that on the five. On the five... There, I went too far, and that note doesn't sound, so now I'm going to have to go back and kind of go the other way. And I can tell you, actually going the other way with the plates on can be a little tricky. little adjustment on that four. Uh, your eyes are going to be some really good tools here. You should you should examine the gaps as you go and uh, you'll you'll get to the point where you can sort of gauge about where that gap should be. Anyhow, so I'm going to adjust the camera back. It's just a simple way to, um, to learn to uh, adjust your side L diatonic for overblows. If you're uh, Wanting to become an overblow player, I can't stress enough uh, the importance of having a teacher. And um, as you practice um, your overblows, I'll give you one other tip. I uh, always try and play very relaxed. And you'll hear uh, I, I have a little bit of moisture in those reeds, and so I'm gonna have to clean this off. Uh, but once again, just make sure that you're you're very very relaxed your shoulders your arms all your facial muscles are very relaxed when you play if you look at the really outstanding uh jazz overbow players uh howard levy and uh, pat bergerson you'll notice that uh their faces uh, J uh jason rosenblatt who uh is is also a phenomenal uh overbow player you'll notice that their facial muscles are very relaxed and they they look like they're almost putting no effort into it and uh, that's very important for establishing good control tonal quality and uh, pitch control 
So anyhow, uh, just a simple technique for adjusting your uh, side L uh, diatonic. I'm Greg Jones with 1623 uh, Custom Harmonicas, and I appreciate you tuning in.